Hello, I'm Robert, the inventor of Bounce Metronome, and I'm going to show you around the program and especially some things that you mightn't discover right away. Because this is YouTube, I will keep these to fairly short video segments if I can. So this first one is about the keyboard shortcuts, tempo dial, and uh, introducing you to the Bounce Metronome and some of the ways of working with the program and uh, accessibility. Uh, I'll be talking about other features later on. So when you first install the program, as you see, I have it set to the free taster. This is the first thing you see. And I'm just going to talk about the free taster during this uh, uh, video. That's because there's a whole lot that I can talk about here already, and particularly about tempo dial. Nearly most of the things you can do, you can already do here. Uh, there's a few things like gradual tempo changes and, and automatic tempo switching you don't have yet. So uh, down here, this is where the basic and the professional are. Um, if you just choose from the drop list, so, and if you're using the professional version, then these are all the rhythms. So that's the main, the most important difference is that the professional, you have many more rhythms. You have the swing and tilt, uh, drum and dance, polyrhythms, and so on. And you also have these extra tempo features as well in the basic and in the professional. As for sounds and the visuals, particularly the bounce visuals, these are the same uh, throughout. And the uh, sounds as well, you can use the same sounds and the same sounds features. And the tempo, an awful lot of the time, also the same. And so in the free taster, you have these, uh, so you're restricted to these uh, six rhythms, so two, four, three, four, 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 at least in the main window. And, uh, and it's the one four, which is your metronome click. So the first thing to notice, uh, so I'll just do a little bit. Uh, first of all, I'll just talk about how you generally use the program. So first of all, there's the, uh, which you'll probably discover fairly soon, but first of all, there's the help, which changes as you hover over each control. And you'll see if the help has changed in the help menu. Now, an important thing that you might not discover so quickly is the ability to, to save as a project. So I've actually, you can open a project here, you can save a project, save as a project. Now, uh, this is very useful if you have it all set up. Uh, this saves everything, just about all your settings in Bounce Metronome. If you go to Bounce for Project Options here, then you have one or two things that don't get saved. Even the MIDI devices do get saved, and the skin colors, so unless you decide you don't want to. Um, the one or two user specific settings that normally means things like the location of particular programs that you might browse to find where C sounds or something is on your on your computer. So that that normally gets saved and it doesn't get reset when you open a project. And you could also open as an example project, which means you want to keep save, uh, keep all your settings, include your settings, including the skin. So uh, if you so if you once you've got things all set up as you like it for some particular project you're working on, then save it as an example project. Or also if you just got it nicely set up and you you want something to be able to go back to, and that opens the project. There's an option here to open as a rhythm settings only. This just opens the sound settings and a few other settings, and that's a, a, some of best use. It's best to save it as a project in most cases. And if you want to keep the skin, you can have different skins for different projects. That's also quite useful. Anyway, now that you know what to do, you, will, you can find out more uh, through the help there. So, uh, and then, so as you see, the help changes as you go over each of these buttons, and you get, for instance, help about the different rhythms. Uh, so sometimes it's like this. It's uh, just uh, giving you background information in case you're a complete newbie. So some people who use Bounce Metronome uh, are not very familiar with time signatures. So I've put up some help here to help you understand time signatures just in case you are in that situation. Uh, but most of the help is about uh, how you use the program. And uh, <coughs> the, so as we're set here to the tempo dial, and this is the first thing I'm going to talk about. So as you can see, there's all this help about how you do the uh, tempo dial. Just to explain how it works, so you have this thing that appears, tooltip that appears, 
you hop it over to the control, there's a, do you notice how there's a triple dot at the end, what we also call an ellipsis, and this means that there's more help available. So you have your standard tooltips, just like you get with many programs, but if the tool depends like that, then you can go over there, and go over there, and then you can, uh, you can find out more. So back to the tempo dial, and so the first, as I see, it's programmable as well. Even in the free taste, it is programmable in the sense that you can change between rhythms and tempi by hand. I will get come to that in a minute. But uh, first of all, how to set the tempo? Yes, but how, how to uh, use the back script paste tempo tab? I mean, I'm sure it's obvious. You just click on the dial for the tempo. But uh, not so obvious that you can set the tempo using the backspace key. So this is useful if you, um, you you know what the music sounds like, but you're not quite sure what the tempo mark is, so what it is in beats per minute, the metronome marking as it's called. So if you just tap away with the backspace key, so you can tap your fast rhythm, and then slower. As you see, it set itself to the tempo of my tap. So, so that's the backspace tempo tap. I chose the backspace key because it's a nice big key on the keyboard. So it's uh, on most keyboards anyway. Sometimes it's small, but it's usually pretty big. So it's easy to find when you're playing a musical instrument. You don't need to hunt around, and you don't need to pick up your mouse, obviously. And uh, this works. It's a global shortcut, works anywhere in Bart's Metronome. If you're using Bart's Metronome at all, any of the windows, uh, just about any of the windows, then if you, and it even works if you're in a text field. So uh, if, if you haven't yet started editing, then you can still use the backspace. You can still use the backspace key as a tempo tap, as you can see. And if you get this tooltip that asks if you want to use the ordinary backspace, Press any other key first and release it. So if you press and release the shift key, it also, if you highlight the text as well, then if you press backspace, it'll now work normally. So uh, this is my philosophy. Uh, it, it automatically highlights if you go slow, so you can't use backspace key with both. So the, uh, that's my philosophy, that uh, if, the backs if a key on your keyboard isn't doing anything at all, then I override it, and if it's something that's be useful to be overridden, so these are the big keys on the keyboard, then you can override it to to work uh, as in a way that is uh, useful to the musician. So, and another thing that is uh, very rarely used in Bart's metronome is the return key. You only need that if you have multi-line edit. So, almost anywhere in Bart's metronome, you can press the return key, and it'll stop. As you see, it starts the rhythm, which is something that you uh, frequently want to be able to do as a musician, and it's very easy to find on the keyboard last big key again. And with this next upload, I've also added the option to use shift plus return to uh, pause play. So let's just do that. See, it's now paused. And if I do that again, it will resume. Shift plus return to resume. This is most useful for the more complex rhythms, so I'm just showing it to you. So those are keys that are close together on the keyboard. And uh, there's one other big key on the keyboard, of course, is the space bar, but I can't use that because keyboard users use the space bar to press buttons. And this is including people who work visually, who are maybe just your fast typist or whatever, then you may use the tab key to navigate between keys, and you may be familiar with using the spacebar key to uh, press buttons. And of course, some people can see the screen fine, but they can't use a mouse. So again, you need to have a keyboard interface for them as well. So if, you, if that's you, then there's a keyboard interface for just about everything in Bart's metronome, even the visuals. Uh, there's just one or two uh, things that you really don't need to be able to do like changing the view in a subtle way in the 3D window, then there's only a mouse interface. Generally, there's a keyboard interface for everything. And this, of course, is of a special interest to 
uh, blind users. So if you are blind, there's actually uh, no graphics, a completely a version of bounce metronome with no graphics at all. And all the, if you go to the visuals drop menu in the normal bounce metronome, there's a lot of stuff down there. And all those windows get removed in the no graphics version. So you go to off and, no, and hide all graphics. And there's a text version of the tempo dial. There's a text version replacing the bouncing balls control panel. Everything is in text. If you uh, have a screen reader installed on your computer, then Bounce Metronome should, uh, Windows should, as long as it is registered with Windows, uh, standard screen readers like uh, Window Eyes and Jaws will be, then Bounce Metronome will start up with the no graphics version. If you want to switch between the two for whatever reason, then there's an invisible button, the very first button on the page, as you see, when you start it up. Sighted users can't see it, but the, uh, if you are a blind user, then it's the first thing you notice on the screen. And for instance, as a sighted user, you know, if I click here, now if I go um, shift tab, it's, it's quite difficult to find as a sighted user, I was just trying to find it. There it is. And I noticed, sorry, I noticed that it's not the first thing on the page for the free taste that I will fix that. I don't know how that happened. Anyway, the, uh, that's the high graphics button. And, uh, and as you see, it's, it's invisible. It's just a little two by two pixel invisible thing. For so uh, so the, uh, that's the free taster. Uh, that's the uh, no graphics version of our metronome. I won't talk any more about the no graphics in this talk because it needs a separate talk. I would need to talk about keyboard shortcuts all the way through. So uh, this is just to mention it, so that you know that it exists. And I will be talking about the visuals through this talk. So if you are blind, do let me know if, if you are really keen to see, or I mean listen, to the no graphics talk and I will uh, get on to it uh, for you. So anyway, I'll continue with this uh, talk for sighted users. So uh, uh, some of this uh, will be, you, you won't know what I'm talking about. So sorry about that if you, if you are blind, but uh, uh, you need to be set. So, so now I'm going to, uh, now if I sh want to show you some more of the accessibility. So if you go to the bouncing balls display and notice how I've, I've you look at the colors of the bouncing balls, uh, there are the, uh, the colors I use are blue, red, and magenta. So it's where you've got three balls shown, as I have here with four, four. I've just shown the measure beat, and now we have these three balls shown. So this is to do with accessibility again. The colors I've chosen are on the uh, are mixes of blue and red. And I also vary the saturation, so that's how uh, vivid the colors are, or how washed out they are and brightness when I want to get more colors in Bounce Metronome. The reason for this choice is because quite a high percentage of the population are colorblind. So if I set those colors to green, for instance, then many people are either red-green or green-blue colorblind. So if I made that purple one green, then uh, uh, quite a large proportion of the population would see it as either being the same as the blue one or the same as the red one. Uh, but making it purple uh, should be possible to distinguish uh, because ev everyone who can distinguish colors at all can distinguish between red and blue. They are at the opposite ends of the spectrum and can also distinguish mixes of the two. And so that's only people who are sighted and can't distinguish colors uh, will have any uh, problems with those colors. So, so now if we go up here to, sorry, to visuals, if you want to customize the colors some more, then you could go to visuals and then to colors. And so for instance, if you are in the rare situation where you've only got one color receptor, you will not want these all to be shades of gray. I haven't set that up as a custom option because it's so rare. But, uh, or you might just want to change colors because the, the uh, just for preference. So you go down here and you can choose 
for instance, the fourth apart three, edit selected color, and now you have this option. You can choose the color wheel. This makes it very easy to just change the hue. You can also change the, I uh, can also set it to a more conventional rectangle if you prefer that way, which has to edit the saturation as well. That's the saturation. You can also click and drag, by the way, like I'm doing, and this edits, this changes the, uh, this, uh, changes the dark, dark, brightness and darkness. And you can also pick from the screen. Click there, and now I can click anywhere on the screen that I want. You know, I want to set it to, um, I don't know, to say that grey colour is not very interesting, but just to show how it works. And you can also choose by colour name as well, and so on. Anyway, I'm sure you'll find your way around there. So you can read through that. So that's the colours section. And uh, so another thing that uh, of interest for accessibility, if we go to visual, then some people need, uh, you might need a very high contrast uh, visual, so the black and white screen, for instance. So. Uh, if you have your desktop set to black and white, it's just like, like with the blind users, Bart's metronome, uh, if, if, you, if Windows is set to black and white, then Bart's metronome will check up to see if that's the case when you first install it. If it is, it will install with the black and white skin. But if you uh, need it anyway, or for instance, someone has changed it away, then you can go up here to visuals and change it back using the black and white. And there you can see that everything is optimized to be easily legible as black and white. The toolkit is also a black and white. The, and everything is the volume bar. Everything is set to be easy to see as black and white. And some things are especially rewritten. So some parts, things to do with the way the bar controls work, have been rewritten to work as black and white. So I've got special features there to help you. And then if you go on white on black, it's the same thing. Everything works fine as white on black. All the way through Bounce Metronome, and the toolkits again are white on black. However, I will give this talk with the Shades of Blue skin, which is the preset, because most users will want to have a nicer looking interface for those who appreciate uh, subtle variations of colour. So if you can see and appreciate subtle variations of colour, you will probably prefer one of the other uh, interfaces. And uh, in any case, I couldn't give a talk for both the white and black and the black and white users in the same video anyway, because uh, one user won't be able to read the other one and vice versa. So anyway, I'm just going to show you something fun, a fun feature of the, uh, of I just clicked, selected it there while we are here, these animated skins. So did you notice how there's this subtle change, this white uh, kind of, it's a caustic, it's just a wavy white pattern. I've made it quite subtle because when I first released Bounce Metronome, these uh, things were very, very slow indeed. They're now quite a bit faster on most computers. So you can actually make quite decent animated skins. And uh, so if I just show you, this is kind of fun feature. I won't spend long on this for that reason. But the, you can, for instance, if you go to the Bounce Metronome uh, website, you've got to download the video encoders plugin and you've got to get probably will need FFT show then you can use the wildlife video which comes with uh, Windows uh, it's, it's in the sample videos and you can make that into a skin and this is what you will get if you do that and you will need to fade it to the background which will do automatically and you'll get something like this now notice that the frame rate is quite slow but this is partly because the tempo dial is holding it down, because the tempo dial is anti-alias. If I were to go here and put options in general, and I go to the more version there, I'll explain all this in a little bit. And if I switch off the anti-aliasing, the smooth edge smoothing the tempo dial, notice how it gets, it should get much faster, you see? A little bit faster. But the tempo dial is still slowing it down even so, I noticed. But anyway, uh, if you've put the tempo dial into a separate window, then that's not a problem. So if you go to Ops, and then you go to Split Main Window, so there are these different ways of showing uh, 
uh, bounce metronome. And there's the, you can have the bounce for separate, there are the separate windows. You can have the bounce, let's do that one first, the bounce and the tempo strip in the main window like that. And the tempo and the help goes down below. So that's another way of showing it. It's uh, maybe a little bit awkward with the help, which is depends. If you've got a big monitor, this can work quite well because the, uh, uh, if you have one or two lines of text on a small monitor, it's easy. So, uh, but it's not too bad. And, and as you see, you the, this, and this animation is quite a bit faster uh, if you do it like this. You also have box and then split main window, and this is very useful if you want to work with the individual windows. And as you can see, the animation is really getting quite smooth when you do that. It's not, uh, uh, so as I say, I'm not going to spend too much on this because it's, it's completed, by the way. But uh, just to explain technically reason, what's going on there is that I have to paint each frame onto the background of the window with a kind of rat resist effect, leaving out all the buttons. And, uh, and then I have to paint all the buttons and the checkboxes and all the text on top of that. And they are made out of little cutouts which are inserted into this thing. I'm using clip rectangles if you know the technical term. And so that's the reason why the animation is quite slow because you have to do so much. You have to repaint all the buttons individually and stick them all together to make a thing. It's the doing the buttons individually that it's slowly done. But still, it's reasonably fast, as you can see, on a modern computer and it gets faster all the time. Anyway, I will go back to the shades of blue skin. Uh, you can, uh, this is obviously for a separate talk, to talk about the animations. Well, I'll just mention, though, that while we're on animations, the one use in which it's quite use, used in a, fact, in a sort of practical way with bounce metronome, I have, this, I have one user who's really keen on this. He runs uh, videos in the background of the bouncing ball, and he runs full screen. He runs it as uh, full movies he runs running in the background, and he wants them with subtitles. So there's an option in Bounce Metronome to show subtitles. So you can actually do that. You can run a movie in the background of the bouncing ball. You can do it like that. And then you can have the movie running in the background with subtitles. Now, I don't know how, how much demand there is for that feature. It's at least one person who's very keen on it. And uh, he said, a big selling point of Bounce Metronome. I don't know, but I'll just mention it there in case it is for you as well. Uh, anyway, so now I'll go back to the shades of blue uh, skin. So um, I will just one thing I will show you, another thing that's very useful, this is just generally uh, using bounce metronome, is that you can use the escape key. If you click on any window and press escape, then it goes full screen like that. You get this message and it says, do you want to go to full screen? And it says, use shift plus escape, you use escape to go back to normal size, which you probably would expect anyway, and shift plus escape to show the menu. So you say, yes, I want to go to full screen, and then to try that shift plus escape, and then there you see the menu up at the top there, so if you want the menu, but you've hidden the title bar. That's very useful on a small screen. And uh, the same with the bouncing balls, same with the help. And same with that window, every, just about every window with bounce metronome will work that way. And notice how the text gets very big. Of course, the buttons stay the same size, the actual icons, because they, these are actual images, these are image icons, so they don't change size. I could actually make them rescale, rescale as well when you go full screen, but I just haven't done that. So uh, I could have that option, come to think of it. But the text all goes, uh, goes to um, gets much larger, and that can be quite useful. Uh, some users use bounce metronome like that because they want to be able to read it from a distance for one reason or another. So then that can be quite useful to have the text all go much larger when you do it full screen like that. So, so that's uh, uh, perhaps enough for now talking about bounce generally, and so now. Let's see. I'm getting on for half an hour with recording, as you can see. I'll go back to talking about the tempo dance. This is getting a little bit long for 
uh, uh, YouTube video. So, but it really does work much better to keep it short. So I'm going to start talking about, just talk a little bit about mobile tempo dial. I'll show you some of the options here. So first of all, I want to show you how the, yes, as you see, if we're on, say, four form, we've got two subdivisions there. We've got all these different parts, and each has its different maximum marking, you see. So if I set, let's say, 60, then the uh, quarter notes, which are also called uh, crotchets in the UK, they're set to 60. Uh, those are the 20, and those are 15. And only one of those is shown on the dial, which means 62 to show the other ones. I just like that and highlights a different rhythm there and it shows the tempo to each one in turn. Uh, I just like to show you that it should, as you see, it says be quarter notes and eighth notes. So if you are in the States, that's how it should install itself. If you are in the UK, it should install itself showing the less, the less version of that. It should install itself with the UK notation, with crotchets, etc., as the default. But if by any chance it is it, when it's installed on your computer, it's showing the wrong version for your country. You could do that here. And uh, the reason why it might get it wrong is because there isn't any setting in Windows to say how you want Windows to display quarter notes. So you can say how you want it to display dates. You can say how you want it to display commas and things for decimal points. There's quite a lot of things you can customize in Windows, but you can't customize the music notation. So there's no way for Bounce Metronome to interrogate your computer and find out your preference in this matter. So uh, what I've done instead is to, uh, it interrogates instead to find out what your country is and also find out what your currency is. And through these two uh, things, then it, the, it's the installed version of Bounce Metronome can figure out how to display on your screen uh, whether to use US notation or not. It just uses a table that I made of the uh, of what the notation is for various countries. But I haven't done all the countries worldwide, and it's I've just done the kind of best guess default, and uh, and so the it might get it wrong. So if it if it does get it wrong for your country, do let me know, and I will add your country in as uh, as a new a new option in there. So anyway, that's it if, if you happen to want to change the, the default there. So let's go back to the tempo dial. If you want to show, you might want to show, it's a little bit awkward maybe having to keep changing to show the different uh, the different parts there. So you can actually show the tempo for all the parts. If you click there, then you'll get extra hours appear on the screen to show you the tempo for the other parts. So that's the, those are the eighth notes, Quavers and those are the quarter notes. And if you go up, and there finally you can see the measure beat uh, coming in as well. So, so that's how you can do that if that's what you want to do. You can also this always show tempo four. You can set it to always show the, the tempo for quarter notes. It doesn't matter which part you show. If you choose, it will always show quarter notes. You can do that if you want. And now let's show you the way that it is programmable. Remember, all of this is in the free data set. And uh, so now if we go to here, you can set to a list of tempo like that. And so if we go, uh, use the up and down arrow keys, then you go through that list, and you go home to go to this first one. And remember, that so long as you haven't started editing, then it will treat these as being keyboard shortcuts rather than Going, if I start editing that, you know, I just highlight a bit. Now I can't use the whole key. It will oh. Now maybe it'll do it. Yes. So it, it should the highlight should be enough. I just realised that it, it, it actually isn't enough. So that's, I'll just program that in something that's in the program there. But normally, just highlighting the text should be enough to enable the uh, to to test to. To, for Bounce Metronome to realize that you have, have already started editing already. Uh, for some reason, it's not doing that for home and end. But anyway, so home and end, and then 
uh, you go up and down arrow key. So what I've, it does, it overrides, instead of up and down arrow taking to the next knot, as we did before, it takes you to the next sample in your list. And so uh, now you can also have rhythms there as well. So now the up and down arrow keys, and remember this is a global shortcut throughout our metronome. Anywhere where you see up and arrow keys don't do anything. So any single line that edit, then it will simultaneously go through the rhythms, and you see it says which rhythm it's playing, and it'll go through the uh, tempo to each rhythm. And uh, as you can see, it's doing it. Now, the keen eye that Bart mugs you might notice that it actually is set to do something that, that you wouldn't really expect in the, in the speed test, especially now with next one. That's two or four and three over four with two subdivisions. So uh, now I just explain this notation here first before I explain why I've got that in the same speed taster. So if you see here, these are what I would call tokens. So you see up there, you've got, well, it's not my name, it's the it's a standard Windows uh, a programmer's name, we call these tokens. But it's, uh, you've got the list of th all the time signatures. Now the thing is, they're not separated using commas. So uh, you could put in commas if you like, the fast metronome will simply ignore them and treat them as white space. It won't pay any attention to any commas you put in there. So you have to be very careful to not have any spaces between them. If I did something like two space over space four, then it would treat that as being a two and a four. And two is treated as two over four, and four is treated as four over four, actually. Because if you leave out the over, it is two to mean, to mean over four. So uh, so anyway, so basically, when you type in your time signatures, be sure to type them in without any spaces. And as you notice, the, how your rhythm is deciphered is shown up here. So this was we've got the moment that's been deciphered. Has been deciphered as 2 plus 4, 2 over 4, plus 3 over 4, with both the two subdivisions. And that was this rhythm. Plus three and two. Oh, there's definitely something going on here. Yes, I, I'm, I, this is not in the upload. This, I'm working on the. Uh, this is the new version that I'm working on just now for upload. And obviously, I need a little bit of work. On, I'm doing some work on. I mid edit some work on these keyboard shortcuts. And I, I noticed the back bit key is a bit extra confused. So as to whether you start editing or not, so I'll fix that. But anyway, and uh, uh, you may notice one or two other minor glitches, which uh, I'll be working on for the next upload. I'm still working on this upload. Anyway, you can uh, you can type in things like two plus three as two. That means two plus three, and then you can simple notation two. We just use the number for the for the four means four over four. You don't need the over four bit. If you can leave it out, and the S means subdivisions. So you can type in a full time signature, you can leave out over four. And you can type in any other time signature. You can type in like five over four, and you can type in like polyrhythms like three colon two, or uh, four colon three, or seven and five colon three. So now if we set it going, so that's our two. Now this is see, it's now playing 7 and 4 and 5 and 4. Let's do them simultaneously like that. That's your polyrhythm. Let's do this the entropy. And now this is our 5 over 4. 3 column 2 polyrhythm and 4 column 3 polyrhythm. So there is limited support for polyrhythms and additive rhythms and all these things just here in the rhythm progression feature. Uh, this is just like a, it's like a kind of um, a freebie kind of taster, just like it's a free taster. This little freebie uh, just to give you a taste of the polyrhythms you can use in Bart's metronome that you've got up here. And so you can't do very much with them. You can't do very much with them except just make them. 
and uh, and uh, you can talk through them as a polygon, but you can't do nearly so much as you can do in the photographic advanced next room. But you can, if you go to this window, you can you can just actually you can actually produce these things in, even in the pretext that in this limited way. And you can then set a different tempo for each one if you like. You can uh, at the moment it's set to override the tempo tile. So if you go like that, you can go back. Oh, doing an auto adjust. Uh, it should be. If you don't want to do that, if you do auto adjust. Now, if I do that, I should get back to one twenty. Oh yes. No, no. That's yeah. That's all right. So if you go, when you press the arrow keys. That's what I mean. If you press the arrow keys. It, yes. Yes. Yeah, so I wasn't explaining that too well. So you need to step through this template with up or down arrow keys. Now, if you have it set to, uh, don't have this auto just switched on, it doesn't matter what tempo you're doing, it will go to the tempo in that list. As you see, it went to the next tempo in that list when you use the arrow keys. If you just want to change the rhythm, switch that off. But if you want to set uh, a, a different set of tempo here, you know, 60, you know, 50, 70, say, uh, and then I think it's, let's see what happens. Okay, it puts all the rest to 70. Then you, if you go like that, now you go step to it, it'll go, of course, 50, 60, 50, 70, as it goes through the rhythms. But, uh, so it goes through 60, 50, 70, so it goes through the rhythms. Now, if you set the tempo down something like way up there, it will just reset to the next rhythm in the list. So sometimes that's what you want, but sometimes you want to be able to play all your tunes just a little bit faster, all your rhythms a little bit faster. So now I just want to go two bit speed per minute faster and same by percentage through them all. Now, if I start going through the step through, I've switched on auto adjust. And now if we step through, we'll see that they're all a little bit faster, so 72.8, 62.4, and back to 52. So they're all faster by the same percentage amount. So that's how this auto adjust works here. And uh, so now, and if you want to, when you have lots of rhythms, you might find it useful to space these out so you can see which one connects to which one. There's a whole lot more I can speak here. I see I've already got 37 minutes. This is ridiculous. So, uh, uh, so I, there's one more thing I want to show you, the dial, and then I better stop. So I just want to show you how the, uh, how the, I really meant this to be a short 20 minute video. So uh, obviously I'll learn as these videos proceed. So this one is, is a little bit longer than intended, but I better finish off talking about the tempo dial. So, so I'll just talk about the, uh, how you can set the tempo range. So if you set it to say, if you set the tempo range here, so set it to something like 2, and up to say 308, that makes a much longer range for the tempo dial. So, so then, if it, so that can be, you can set whatever range you like. And now you can also set the custom tempo names. So you can put your custom tempo name in here, and you can do stuff like, uh, let's just say, say very slow, and so you put just your tempo name, and then you put the number, the point at which you want that tempo to stop. So the, the upper limit of it. You put 10, and there you see it appears on the screen, very slow, goes up to 10 bits per minute. You can also use uh, Unicode. Now I've got some Unicode examples here. If I go to uh, Beats counting systems, I just want to show that you have this custom counting system. And now if I choose... Uh, if I choose, for instance, the Japanese numerals, you see the Japanese numerals down here. So if you're Japanese, I'll talk about the uh, Unicode and different uh, these things later on. So I won't go into this too much as in this video, which is that it's said too much anyway, but just to say you can use any Unicode symbol there. So there we are, I just added a Japanese character to some number or other. Uh, I, I'm not Japanese, so I'm not quite sure which number it is. So I'm not a Japanese speaker, but I, I just added this by looking them up. So there's all these different numbers, number schemes you can use if you so like. 
But anyway, that's just to show show how the uh, how you can use the Apache Unicode on the dial. Now, uh, I also want to show about the more and less. So you see how we've got this more button, so there's the less version, and they keep on showing more and more and more. So the way it's when you first get it, it's in newbie mode. And so this is in box, and you, could, and you would see now that there's no more button. It's the simplest version of this. If you go to opt and switch to advanced mode, then you start seeing uh, these more buttons. And then you can keep on going and you get more and more and more. And as you see, it gets you can eventually get a huge number of op options. So you can set if you're really into the you know the width of the pointer. You see the pointer is getting wider. You can set the uh, center surface radius smaller, larger, as you can see. You can get rid of it all together if you like. So, uh, so uh, basically, again, my philosophy with bounce metronome. You see, the way I, I develop bounce metronome is I want to try out a new feature. I put in a, a new checkbox or a text field into the user interface, and then I can adjust it and then get it looking nice. And then once I've done that, I would normally, I can then get rid of all this. So I could have got rid of all these things. So you simply can't customize the uh, tempo dial at all. And that'd be quite easy to do. Basically, I just go to, to this dialog and just delete all this stuff. But I thought, well, you know, some people will want to do that, but some people are really into graphic design. So why not just leave it in the very most version of the tempo dial? So some of these features you see in the most versions of these programs, of these windows, are simply there because I thought, well, I'll finally leave them in because some people will want them. But many of the features that you find in the more versions of these windows have been asked for them by particular users. And basically, there's just so, I get, there's so many features in Advanced Metronome, I've added so much to it, and there's so many people ask me for features, and you simply could not put them all into separate windows without losing, uh, making it terribly difficult to navigate around the program. So that's why I have this more and less version. There's just no way, I keep getting, uh, I've, I've, every few years someone suggests a different way of designing the user interface, which, uh, which they think would fix all these issues, but really it's not, it's not possible to do it because there simply isn't enough green real estate. I've yet to find out about any way of doing it. This is the best solution I've found so far, anyway. Uh, there have been some other ideas I've explored, but uh, this seems to be the best solution that I can find. And uh, so in the least version of all these windows, you have the things that, that, that everyone uses. And if you, if you suggest a new feature to me, I might put it in the least version of the window, but I might more likely put it in a more version if it's something that I think only a few people ever likely to use, or if I think it's a minority feature, then that's what I would do. And um, so, so that's when you're in one of these windows, you can click more, 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 and eventually you find more and more options that you can do with the window. So uh, now after customizing it quite a bit, you might decide that you want that, okay, you, you don't like what you did, you just want to go back to the way it was. So I, so I, oh yeah, I should have explained what I did there. If you click on the O icon, you get this thing, which pops up, and you can first of all you can save, um, you can save your settings. If you do save as, and you could say um, temperature design, and you see it saves as the tempo tempo dial design file, and you uh, you go set it to. Uh, just type in some name that you like. So, for instance, uh, you know, put, uh, large tempo range. Tempo range. Click save, and that then will appear in this drop list. Now you can click to reset this window, and that resets all your settings. You see, it's back to standard tempo down. You can go down, down here, and do large tempo range, and it should. Wait a minute. Oops. 
should have set everything back. Why are we not doing that? I think I know what's going on there. That it has set everything back. This hasn't refreshed the temporary down. Okay, so uh, yes, this is another thing I'm going to have to fix. Uh, uh, I'll fix that for this next upload. It just when it opens a uh, temporary dial window option, it resets. It, 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 it you'll notice that everything changed in the temporary dial design window, but it didn't change in the temporary dial itself. It's just a tiny thing with that one one line of code thing. I mean, if you fix that. So so that's and then it, so if you got to reset the window, reset this, and then choose from this, it'll choose from the previous settings of that window, and, and then it'll choose from the recent. And it should then display correctly in the case of the temporary dial for this window, and, and the same for all the other windows in Bounce Metronome. Any window you use in Bounce Metronome, you can save the settings of that window, you can also reset the settings of that window, just for that window. And notice how nothing else changed, so the rhythm stayed at our five of the four, just the temporary dial change. So, uh, and that is now booked. I now see it uh, on, my, uh, on the other screen. I see that we're now going to the people now. So, I think that is well, plenty enough to talk about. Pretty much long enough for a video for YouTube. It'll also take quite a while to upload it at this length as well. So, let's stop at this point. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, there's loads of things I can talk about, and lots of things I missed out, which I was planning to talk about in this talk, so, so uh, I'll, I'll talk about those in later talks. And, uh, and that's general things to, using, to do with using Bounce Metronome. And then the also, for the next one, I think I will mainly focus on uh, talking about the instruments and accents, because that's another thing that people generally ask me about. I'm asked about the temporary dial, and ask about setting instruments and parts and accents and things like that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and, uh, and I hope you were able to hear this. I sometimes don't speak uh, loudly enough or I sometimes speak too quickly. So I'm getting used to how best to use this. And at the moment I'm using the speaker on my laptop because I just can't find the leads for my good speaker. They're somewhere in the attic and I can't uh, you know, do the move. And I just can't, I can't seem to find them yet. So I'm sure they'll turn up. But uh, meanwhile, I hope you can hear this. The recording isn't so good quality. Of the, I'm recording the sound on the computer and simultaneously recording the sound from the microphone on my laptop, which unfortunately isn't so um, very good quality. But yes, you, you, you should be able to hear what I say. But the main problem is if I speak quietly, then you might hear what I say. And you will also hear the fan noise in the background coming and going of the computer. So, sorry, there's nothing I can do about that just now. But uh, uh, I will, I will see if I can see if I can find these leads, or if necessary, I will um, maybe I should go and uh, buy some new leads. So anyway, and I might redo this video when when that happens. So anyway, uh, this is the Robert Inventor channel on YouTube. And I'm Robert, the inventor of Bounce Metronome, and I've been telling you about Bounce Metronome and how you use it. And uh, you can comment on this on, on, on YouTube. But uh, another good place to, to discuss this or uh, to find out what's going on is the uh, Bounce Metronome Facebook page, Talk to the Forums as well. I'll put links to them in this video. Uh, thanks for listening, and, uh, and do, do put comments here if you're on YouTube. And, and let me know how you, how, how you find it. Uh, thanks very much. And, and, and I'll uh, hear from you again in the